We are back again. We are still making our way through the uh, through the book of Psalms. Last week we talked and uh, taught over Psalms chapter twenty seven. So let's see how much we remember, Brother Jarrett. Anybody else? Brother Larry. David's personal desire was to be to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, meaning that he wanted the presence of the Lord in his life, no matter what. Okay. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah, this was this was written about the same time as as Absalom. Fact of the business, we're about to get to Psalm twenty eight is the the fourth in a uh, quadrilogy, if you will, um, of psalms that were believed to have been written during the time that Saul, uh, David was on the on the run from Absalom. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anybody else? Yeah, there is there is throughout this psalm a um um almost a a hint of desperation um to some of the wording there is, there there is there is joy and there is there is hope and then it is it is followed up by uh despair and and uh Praying that God would intervene, um, and uh, but verse fourteen punctuates it with patience, ever present, ever useful, ever hard to obtain. Patience. Psalm twenty-eight, first verse: Unto Thee will I cry, O Lord. My rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy oracle. Now, um, again, I want to point out this is the last, and I think you're at the end of it, you will you will see why. This is the last of those psalms that were believed to be written at the same time as he was fleeing from Absalom. And we open very similarly to how we have opened or concluded or even found midsections of these psalms with David's desperate cries for aid. Um it, it each one of these, and like we said before, we have seen a conclusion of of patience and waiting. Um, but David continually goes back and asks for aid. Um, each of these are a song. Each of these are a poem. Each of these are you know however you, however you want to perceive them, but they are a mirrored prayer. And There is a fine line to walk between trusting in the Lord and, and if you will, in, 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 a, in a good sense, badgering the Lord, staying on His radar, so to speak. Um, when you bring something to the Lord, it's important to trust Him that He will take care of it. Um, I, I, I very much believe that, that the Bible uh, por- uh, uh, tells us that we should Take a take our burdens before him and just let him take care of them. But David, despite being patient, despite spreading these problems out before the Lord and saying, "I'm going to wait on you," he continually comes back and back and back again. This is again the fourth psalm that we that we have this in. And uh, David didn't also let go of his request. His need was ever present 
His need was, uh, was, was, was always at the forefront, and he wanted to make sure that God heard, heard him. And that's kind of what the, a feeling that we can get from this first verse is, Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Now, what he's referencing is, is of course, the lost, who don't have a voice with God. They don't. A lost person can can pray and hope and plead until they're blue in the face and they're and and can can God perceive the audio? Can God perceive uh understand the language with which they speak? Of course he can. But it is ineffectual to him. And David was requesting that the prayers that he was sending up, I mean, this is time number four. We're gonna give it a you know our, our fourth go around here that he not find himself in a, sin, a situation where his prayers had become ineffectual to God, that his, that his, that his prayers become um, unheard by God. We, we, we really, when, when, we, when we come before the Lord, when we, when, we, when, we, when we ask for something, especially if it is um, a request not prompted by fleshly desire and, 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 a, and, a, and a genuine need in in the flesh or even in the spirit, but, uh, you know, we're not asking for, you know, I'm not saying hound the Lord until you get a brand new Lamborghini. That, that's probably not going to happen. I, I might be shocked. You might prove me wrong, but I, I don't see a lot of scripture to back that type of thing up. Um, but if we have illness, if we have, uh, if we have a, um, uh, a spiritual need, going before the Lord and continually setting ourselves before them is very much supported by Scripture, and David wanted to make sure that he was there. And he said, he goes on in verse 2, uh, to uh, hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. He is, at, he, he's, he is very much like Daniel, praying toward, at this time, the tabernacle, um, and where it sets the the uh, the 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 oracle there, if, 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 you, if you look up that word, is, is, is like a sanctuary, is like where, where God's seat is. He, uh, they, he was praying as Daniel did. You know, D- Daniel in the Bible, when they, when, when, when they outlawed praying to God, what did he do? He opened up the window and he prayed toward Jerusalem every day. And, and, and David was making it his habit uh, to pray before him. Draw me not away from the wicked, draw me not away with the wicked, and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. Give them according to their deeds, according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. Draw me not away with the wicked. David did not want to be identified with the heathen. David did not want to be. Um, but at this point, if you're David, let's just let's just make an example here. Uh, you know, if if you were if 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 you were David and you had been continually asking, and and yet your enemies ever closed in. Uh, if you, um, I I think it was. I'll just double check for myself. I believe it was Psalm 26. Yeah, Psalm 26. David asked to be judged of the Lord. Remember, he, he asked for God's judgment. And at this point, with no answer from God, li- liter- literally the type, Psalm 28 referencing the type of silence that lost people gets, David begins to wonder, am I not the problem? And so his immediate thought pattern is, don't put me with those that you have deemed outside of your sight away from you, drawn away. You know, it, it's, it is possible to be saved and wicked at the same time. You can, you can do wickedly as a saved person, but in that state, you are not going to walk close to God. You are not going to speak with God. You are not going to uh, 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 walk with God. It, 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 it is, it's not possible. And, and David is worried that he's in this situation. Uh, he, he says, uh, w- um, uh, the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their heart. Now, I, again, I think we've had subtle references to Absalom throughout these Psalms. Now, I think this is another one of them here. Someone who, on one hand, says, everything's all right. Everything, you know, I, I just, I just, 
love to be around you. You're just you're just a, you're just a pleasure to be around. And then behind your back um, uh, uh, sharpens the blade, if you will, for for your for your demise. Um, uh, Absalom was very much that person. If you read that account in the scripture, um, Absalom was, was a charismatic gen, uh, 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 a gentleman. He was able to bend people with their words, and David did not want to be counted as wicked, but he also did not want to be counted against, a, a, as someone who, had, um, uh, who was doing these type of things, that, that was finding himself in the same place that his son was currently in. He says, Give them according to their deeds, according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Now, he is asking for punishment on the wicked. Now, in the New Testament, we're taught uh, to love. We're taught to... Uh, to um, uh, 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 express Christ's mercy and grace that is given us. And this flies nearly in the face of a lot of those ideas. And I don't think that the Bible has any inconsistency. Um, but what David is, what David is, ma is making the case of is that these things are going to, for, for, for those that are dealing wickedness, those consequences are coming home. Um, Judas had no other had no other uh, recourse after his actions than what happened to him. His de his ultimate des destination was determined, and Jesus, even in his ministry, despite preaching love and forgiveness and everything, was was very against sin and knew what it was about you you want to know the personality of our lord when he has lost his patience read the passage where he goes into his father's house and starts overturning tables that's when he had lost his patience he had had he'd had he'd had enough with the jews and how they had treated his father's house and and th that is a very rare side that we see of christ uh, of, of righteous indignation I'm, I'm done i've had enough and 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 if you read uh, verse 4 in with verse 5, I think also David is hoping that if he is a, a, a wicked person, maybe all this that's happening to him is deserved. Everything that is, if, if, if he, said, he said, draw me not away, but if that's not the Lord's will, that means he is wicked, which means verse 4 would apply to whom? It would apply to him. Every, every person that was assailing him round about, he wanted them dealt with by God. But if he was in the wrong, he was inviting punishment upon himself. Very, very similar to what we see in, in, in chapter 26 where he, he asked for self-judgment. Uh, 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 David wanted to be on the side of the right, but if he was not on the right, he wanted the chastisement. Why should we desire chastisement as Christians? Well, if we don't have chastisement, the New Testament says, then you are bastards and not sons. You're not one of his if you don't get punishment for doing wrong things. I don't whip Brother Lawley's kids. Why? Because they're not my children. If I did that, I, I would hope that he would, uh, he, would, he would have issue with me. I don't whip Brother Jarrett's children because they're not my children. I whip AJ and Gracie because they're mine. And if they step out of line, and, and you know this is the thing, and, and I've been around a lot of different families, and so that's since I've become a parent, you're much, you're, you're, you have a heightened awareness of how other people run their households in in, in deference to yours. It's it, there's there's all there's always a different rule or something, and, and you have to be respectful of those rules when you're in someone else's home. But in my house, there are certain rules. And those rules might not be upheld in Brother Lolly's house. I would say that we probably have similar households, at least on the basics of morality. But when it comes to the minutia, there might be all kinds of differences. But in my house, under my law, when they step out of line, they are under chastisement. Now, if Brother Lolly's kids were to come over to the house and they step out of it, they're, A, they're not my kids, so I'm not going to chastise them. And B, because they're unaware of my law, I'm not going to do anything to them. I will, I will let their parents know what, what happened to them, and they will take their own punishment. But in that, we can see love. I don't whip my kids because I enjoy, I have some type of masochistic enjoyment in their pain. 
I don't, I, I don't enjoy uh, uh, seeing them cry. But what I, I do want is for them to grow up with respect and honor and in a very similar situation, the Lord wants you to respect and honor and obey Him. And if you're not getting whipped and you're able just to do whatever you want, maybe you're one of Brother Lolly's kids and not one of Adam's kids. Maybe you have a different father. And, and that, that's a good self-measure. If, you can, if, if you're so far away from the Lord that you're unable to measure yourself by any other parameter, look around you. That's one of the reasons why I think the, the story of the, of, the, of the rich man's son who took his inheritance and went out is not a real good, solid story about salvation. It's about a Christian wandering away from God and then coming home. Um, because he found himself in chastisement. He woke up and looked about himself and said, what am I doing here? There are servants that are doing better in my father's house than I'm doing here by myself. He looked around at the chastisement and said, I'm a son, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm under punishment right now, and I'm going to go home to dad. Because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of His hands. There is layers upon layers of things that we could dig into here. And on the very basis, listen to the top layer uh, 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 science. You know what? Evolutionists and atheists and stuff, they regard not the works of the Lord. Because they can look around themselves, they can look at the intricacy of our universe and say... It, it just happened. It just, it just, it just, uh, you know, a, a, a series of very, very lucky dice rolls, and here we are. Chance did not bring us about, and, and they, they completely disregard it. In fact, they actively seek theories to disprove Work of the works of the Lord's hands, nor the opera, uh, nor the operations of His hands. That 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 is more directly with me and you, Brother Larry, being the pastor of one of the Lord's churches, an operation of the Lord. It is it is it is a it is a work of the Lord. Now, uh, you know, when I'm operating, if you will, with my hands, when I'm doing my job, you're never going to see me just taking my hands and just start yanking hair out because that's not a real solid way to uh, uh, run a business. Uh, uh, the human hands are not built for cutting hair. The human hands, though, are wonderfully designed by our Lord with these little things right here, opposable thumbs. They, they're, they're great little items to have. And you can, you, and I'll take up a clipper, and I'll take up a comb, or I'll take up a pair of shears, and I'll take up, I'll, I'll, I'll take up a water bottle, whatever I need to do, and I use tools to perform the operation that I know how to perform. I, I, I can cut hair with a whole lot less than what I usually do on my day-to-day -day job. The, 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 I, I've seen people cut, this, of course, in professional competitions, I've seen people cut hair with glass. They just pull the hair up and, 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 and cut hair with glass like this. Very dangerous, it looks like to me. But uh, you, you can cut hair with just about anything, but with the right tool and with the right knowledge up here, you can do some really good things. And in the same way, the Lord, He has an operation that He, that he works in each and every single one of us, but He needs tools. He likes to use tools. He uses, he uses preaching men of God. He uses teachers. He uses, he uses regular old church members to perform operations. And he works, and we've talked a lot about vessels, we, he works however you were designed. Preachers are designed in a very, very specific way. Teachers are designed in a very, very specific way. I don't use uh, a pair of pliers to drive a nail. I use a hammer. <laughs> uh, and the operations of the Lord's hands, uh, th these, these people that, uh, that they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation, these people that don't have any regard for that, are those the ones that are constantly stepping in your way? Uh, when uh, when uh, 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 
uh, Brother Ken was looking for a building for uh, the mission in Paris. Uh, uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, they lost the first meeting place. And these are people that, and there was a council involved, and those were people that disregarded the operation of the Lord. They disregarded it. They said that the operation of the Lord is below what we want, and so we're not going to allow it. That we that that, that we've got we've got better plans than the designs of our Lord. Now our Lord is a is, is a masterful creator. Everything works out exactly the way that's supposed to. Honestly, I think Brother Ken ended up with a with a, with a better situation than he would have had, but. These people are not are not without punishment. Things like, and, and you, Christians can do this too. You can you can preempt a work of the Lord. Well, I don't think we should do that. You know, somebody says, well, I think we should you know start some type of a uh, 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 door to door something or another. And I don't want to do that. Well, you've you're you're disregarding an operation of the Lord. There's punishment for that. Read the Bible and, and, and look at what happens to anybody that tries to stand in the way of God's plan. It does not turn out well for them in any scenario. The children of Israel tried to leave Egypt. Pharaoh said, no. Nah. And he sent an entire army out after him. God says, well, I mean, we're bottled up here, so we're going to still do this my way. Split the Red Sea. Everybody go ahead and walk across. Pharaoh's army comes in. He goes, and that's the end of that. Don't disregard the operation of the Lord. He, he, will, he will make a way. Brother Ken, he, he made a way for you. But what's going to happen to those people on the other side of the Red Sea? Right. You know, that's, that you, and you don't want to be those people. You don't want to be the guys in the chariots getting uh, 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 under uh, you know, millions of gallons of seawater. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. Now, this is what I said. This is the end of the thing. We finally have an answer. David says, Blessed be the Lord, because he heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. And, my, and with my song, I will praise him. Now, this is one thing that we haven't been able to talk about because we haven't gotten to this moment yet. But when the Lord finally answers your prayer, let him and other people know about it. Right. Our, our inability sometimes to thank the Lord for, the, for his help is, is, is somehow incredibly baffling to me. At times, and and I, I stand here as guilty of it as as the next person. We ask and we beg and we plead and we hope and we pray, and then when everything finally comes along, whew, I'm sure glad that, that that was sure lucky that worked out that way. Well, no, it wasn't luck. It wasn't it wasn't the doctor. It wasn't well. That was just a you know that was just a a, a bad scan. Sure glad sure, sure glad uh, nothing came of that. And we disregard the work of the Lord that we prayed for in the first place. Right. David says, for he hath heard my supplications. His, your pleadings. Your crying. And there's a lot of crying in these first four chapters, let me tell you. We've been through them. We've been through them in detail. We know. David was in a bad, bad situation. Not only did he hear, he said that he's my strength and my shield. Not only does he give you power, he gives you defense. You don't need anything of your own. The Lord, uh, um, uh, my heart greatly rejoices, and, my, and, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also, and lift them up forever. The Lord is their strength, and He is the saving strength of His anointed. We, we all have issues right now in the past, and we're going to have more in the future where we need the help of God. A big part of this that we need to look at, first of all, we don't need to stop praying. 
In that we're not praying, though, th those, those begging and pleading don't need to be, well, if uh, hopefully God, hopefully, there shouldn't be no hope so in it, because if you look at verse 7, he said, my heart trusted in him, and I am help. Trust, faith, a missing part of a lot of, you can pray until you're blue in the face, but if you don't believe God's going to take care of it, if you don't have no faith in him, then wh why should he? What do you tell to the woman that, 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 that had the issue about thy faith hath made thee whole? Right. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be a whole person. And, and that alone <laughs> was powerful enough to rob virtue from our Lord. You want to get a hold of God, you have to have faith that if I can just reach up and I can take him by the hand and I can make him notice me, then I can do something. I'll, I'll go back to the example with my kids. If my kids want something, a lot of times it starts out low. Daddy, I want this. And, and, and maybe I'm in the middle of something, I don't hear him. Dad, Dad, Dad! Now you have my attention. Maybe it's not the attention you were hoping for because now you're yelling at me. But you have my attention. That takes going back and back and back again. Let God know that you need something and have faith that as a father, now, now when they come at me like that, I might be a little upset that they interrupted me, but I'm not God. So we'll take that whole thing out. God's going to say, oh, yes, my, my son, what can I do for you? And we have to have trust and faith that like a father, he's going to reach up on that top shelf that we can't reach and bring right down the exact thing that we was wanting the entire time. Save thy people, bless thy inheritance, feed them also, and lift them up forever. And then David offers up a prayer for Israel because in this same time, Israel was in quite a mess too. I mean, it was in the middle of a civil war. So uh, I think he was, uh, he was concerned for Israel, which is why you have the end that. David had a, a heck of a time running from Absalom. He had, a, he had a hard time praying for it, and it took him an incredible amount of patience and faith and prayer. And I think those are three things that we greatly lack this day and time, patience being chief among them. We live in such an instantaneous age. You want popcorn? 90 seconds. You want, you, 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 you want to know the answer to something? Google it. You probably, you know, Google, if you ever look, Google actually has how many milliseconds it takes to return a result, re result to you. Instantaneous. Instantaneous gratification on everything. And we feel like if we pray to God, we should get answered right now. God's just the, you know, the, the spiritual Google, right? Wrong. God's an architect. And you know what? When you're building a house, you don't start with the roof. And when I get to the roof, we'll put it on. And it'll be good, and it'll be strong, and it'll be perfect, and it'll be everything you've ever needed. <laughs> but you're going to have to wait till we get the foundation and the walls up first. Any questions or comments on Psalm 28? Yeah. Yeah. Harrowing him over and over till. Well, and the good Lord likes it. the 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 prayer is not called incense for the Lord for no reason. The Lord likes to hear us pray. He likes to hear us cry, and sometimes. Those first couple of prayers don't smell so good. They're, they're uh, you know, uh, uh, please, Lord, can you prayers instead of, oh, Lord, I'm down on my face, uh, you know, humbled and, and broken before you type prayers. And then you're really cooking with gas. Anything else? Brother Larry. Okay. Tomorrow? Tuesday. Tuesday. Be in prayer on Tuesday then. Make, uh, make application what you've learned here and anything that you've ever heard about prayer. <laughs> well, fixing to find out. <laughs> make sure they didn't remove it all with that surgery that you had. Uh, <laughs> all right, if there's nothing else, you're dismissed. Have a great week.